Welcome. Hello. Everybody awake after lunch? I know you get that kind of post-lunch sleepy. So hopefully this will be fun. So um, many of you I know and have attended my talks before. So if you have, you will know that I am qualified to discuss one thing and one thing only, and that is IVR, because I voice it every day, um, day in and day out. And uh, uh, I, I love it when it's done well, and it kind of destroys my soul when IVR is not done well. Really, latecomers, really? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, rest assured, this talk will not be in the least bit technical. And uh, hopefully, I will shed some light on. Uh, I tried to approach this from the point of view of the callers and their perception of IVR, which uh, I don't need to tell anybody in this room. It's probably not all that positive a lot of the time, and for good reason. So we're going to uh, delve into that. So, OK. So um, the number 10 reason, uh, or the number 10 things that <laughs> people will not tell you about their IVR is that they actually hate talking on the phone. So in the keynote, when we did that tribute this morning to Dude, I, ha I happened to mention that I actually hate talking on the phone, which is crazy and kind of ironic, because this is how I make my living. I actually really hate talking on the phone. Uh, I promise you that most of the callers that call into your company or whatever companies you're doing installs on uh, actually prefer to transact online almost always, especially with the younger demographic, and they hate picking up the phone to actually call a company. Think about the last time you actually carved out time to call a company to ask a specific question. Um, uh, chances are, actually, if you did that, uh, a couple of things were happening, but we'll get into that. Uh, the number nine thing that they will never tell you is that they have a very strong and profound fear of choosing the wrong, the wrong option, and in doing so, will send them through the whole circuit all over again. Um, so I had uh, an experience where my husband and I were going on a cruise, and uh, I don't want you to get the wrong idea about me, but we bought the unlimited drink package. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so we wanted to call Royal Caribbean and find out exactly what type of alcohol is included in that package. We wanted you know, to find out if it's like high-end wines and stuff like that. So the IVR gave all sorts of different choices. You know, if you want more information about your stateroom, press this. If you want to find out about ship amenities, and we're going, mm, I don't know, alcohol is kind of an amenity. Like, you know, what, what do we do? What do we pick? And, and we were terrified about picking the wrong thing. And we did. And we ended up making it through the whole thing and then just going to a live agent after that. So uh, callers will have that extremely strong fear that the option that they're going to pick is going to be the wrong one. Uh, the eighth thing that they will never tell you is that the uh, horrible IVR is actually expected. Uh, whenever you call a company, uh, particularly like banks, uh, great big institutions, uh, you almost expect that it's going to eat up a whole lot of your time and that it's going to be confusing and somewhat circuitous to try to uh, maneuver your way through. So uh, unfortunately, that's the standard that's set, but that also um, enables you to perhaps improve the situation. So uh, callers don't actually know what a good IVR is. And when I talk about what a good IVR is, uh, I'm seeing it more and more with my clients who will actually use the IVR to uh, promote their company's brand and to enforce the identity that the company has. Rather than just being used as a way to sort callers into various departments, which is you know, essentially the mechanism of what an IVR does, it can be used for so much more. And so, uh, again, you, you have the opportunity to kind of sh pleasantly shock callers into uh, you know, them dialing into a company that's actually pleasant to transact with in an automated way. So uh, the number six thing is uh, callers don't actually want to take it out on the live agent. But unfortunately, the IVR almost sets them up to do so. So uh, the anecdotal story that ties to this is we were doing renovations in our house and we ordered uh, some shower doors which arrived from Quebec, which is like a whole other country, and they were the wrong size. So I actually had to get on the phone and call this company called Ove. They supply uh, shower doors to Costco. And um, their IVR asked for my language preference, because they're in Quebec, so they want to know English, 
you know, for, for English, press one. For French, press two. They asked for that selection three different times. And they had way too many submenus. <coughs> and I, I'm not sure why they're asking if I had the opportunity to learn French in the time that I was waiting on hold. <laughs> I'm not too sure. But so uh, unfortunately, this makes callers absolutely frazzled by the time they get to a live agent. And so uh, I, I'm not, I, I didn't take it out on the agent, but I was definitely frazzled. My voice was you know, higher than usual, and I was you know, breathing too shallow, as you do when you're stressed out. So this is kind of what happens. Um, also, most callers know that your IVR is confusing, but they will never ever let you know that unless they're me. Uh, usually if I've gone through a really rough phone call with a, a company that I need to get something settled with, uh, at the end of the call I'll say, by the way, you should know, I do this for a living and your, your phone system is terrible. So, um, <laughs> so they won't let you know that the IVR is confusing. And let's face it, most IVRs seem to be deliberately confusing. Um, Here's another thing. They, they won't tell you that your IVR is too long, but it probably is. Um, so shout out some numbers. How many options do you think an opening greeting should have? That's realistically uh, the amount of options that a typical caller can remember or respond to. Three? I love it. Three. Uh, I actually say five at the high end. Five maximum. Five choices maximum. If you are forcing callers to go into a subdirectory, and I'm not a fan of <coughs> subdirectories, I think if you can't sort them out at the first level of IVR, you're not asking the right questions in the IVR. But if you have to do a subdirectory, limit it to three choices in the subdirectory. And maybe you only have one subdirectory. Um, I hope that makes sense. But no, I love it that almost everybody said three choices. Um, they want a solution to their problem. They're not interested in fixing um, your IVR unless they're me. And um, it, it's amazing how many times I've said to companies, I, I would really love to do your phone system, not just because I want the business, but because I want to make it better. And often the live agent will say, oh, yeah, we should do something about that. I have no idea who our telephony guys are. So usually the, the operators have no idea who it would be. Uh, but basically, callers just kind of want to get to the end of their problem and get to a resolution, and they're not actually all that interested in helping you fix your system. Um, also, a waste of time is actually perceived as a good bargain if they can arrive at a solution. I hope that makes sense. So in other words, they feel a little bit helpless and unempowered as callers, and so they, they almost are desperate um, when they're squeezed out of an IVR uh, and, and put in front of a live agent that they just want to handle that very delicately because they just want to arrive at a solution to their problem. And they want to feel set up for success, and yet it seems like most IVRs are actually constructed to frustrate and confound callers and eat up their time. Um, yeah, again, this sort of ties in. They're so grateful to get through to a live agent, they don't want to blow it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's the truth. So how do we fix all of these, uh, these issues? So for the first one that we talked about, they hate talking on the phone. Acknowledge that callers prefer other, form, uh, sorry, other forms of contact other than talking on the phone. And that can be something as simple as in the IVR offering them the chance to go online, which they've probably already done. Think about it. Uh, when you phoned a company the last time, let's say you had to call a bank, um, you either could not find the solution on their website or you have a problem and you're very unhappy about that. So if you handled your IVR with that sensibility, knowing that everybody who calls in needs specific care, and have that reflected in your IVR. Say things like, uh, we're going to get you to an agent as quickly as possible, and sort of acknowledge that their problem uh, needs to be expedited and escalated, if that makes sense. Uh, for the predicament of the strong and profound fear of choosing the wrong option, the IVR is for you to organize callers and to make the best use of your live staff. That's what it's always been about. It's like a big escalator that sorts everybody in blue jackets off to the left and everybody in red jackets off to the right and all miscellaneous callers go straight ahead to be sorted. That's kind of what it's all about. Um, 
However, um, it is not on the caller and it's not their responsibility to feel the repercussions of a wrong choice. Have you ever had an IVR in which you thought, I just need to talk to someone live and you press zero and it actually sends you back through the IVR? It's, uh, <laughs> it's an evil thing and it does exist and I've had it happen to me too, which makes me doubly pissed off. So um, about the issue of the horrible IVR being expected, IVRs are notoriously and needlessly complicated, make it simple for the caller to arrive at service. And again, you're gonna do that by making sure that you don't have too many options, that you limit the use of subdirectories. Um, I always tell this example, I did a IVR for a cardiology clinic here in Florida, and they had 13, 13 options. <laughs> and the last one was, if this is a medical emergency, please hang up and dial 911. That was the last option. So I know, it's terrible. So that's the other thing is that I really, really urge people to figure out the top five reasons, or three, but five I'll allow, reasons why people would call your company and front stack them in uh, order of importance or use of frequency or frequency of use. So uh, technical support, medical emergencies, those should be right up front. Hope that makes sense. Um, for the issue of callers not knowing what a good IVR is, you have a rare opportunity to do something uh, different and change the industry, seriously. Uh, but people are almost afraid to depart from the typical IVR that we see all the time. For this, press that. For this, press that. So I'm just, I'm always pleased when clients break away from that uh, formula and try to do something different with their IVR. Uh, about the issue of callers don't want to take it out on the live agent, it's an important one. Uh, if callers are in a hostile mood, the IVR probably made them that way, or it didn't help it if they started off the call being a little edgy. Uh, about IVRs being too confusing, again, keep it simple. Um, I can't emphasize it enough, callers' time and callers' patience is way, way shorter than you think it is. Um, about IVR being too long, again, you need to abbreviate everything. So they are used to IVRs which gobble up their time, and it's up to you to change the paradigm. Um, about the issue of them wanting a solution to their problem, and they're not interested in fixing your IVR, uh, they won't know what's not working with your IVR, they just know that it's not. And they will remember that company that sapped all of their time that morning that they had to call and get to the bottom of this bank charge back or whatever it is. Um, about the waste of time being perceived as a good bargain, providing they can get where they want, callers will tolerate a lot of nonsense, and that's a terrible thing. And why should they have to tolerate a colossal waste of their time? Um, they want to feel set up for success, and it actually takes surprisingly little to do that, uh, to empower your callers, and it takes um, actually very little for you to derail them on their uh, mission to get what they need. Um, callers know that if things go sideways or <laughs> that um, you know things go a little bit off the rails that they will get transferred. Um, even just a transfer, even if you've explained your situation and the agent has determined that they are not the agent you should be speaking to, that, that feeling of despair, I think we've all felt it going, oh no, I have to explain this whole thing to somebody else. Even if they've kept notes, for some reason they still want your PIN number and they want you to explain your situation all over again. So that's kind of the number one dread of callers is that the whole thing is going to start all over again. So uh, Christmas has arrived early, people, so I have a little gift that I found in my archives. I was looking for stock prompts that I had recorded, and um, uh, we have a little bit of... Congratulations. You have successfully installed and executed the Asterisk Open Source PBX. Who's that? You have also installed a set of sample sounds and configuration files that should help you to get started. Like a normal PBX, you will navigate this demonstration by dialing digits. If you're using the console channel driver instead of a real phone, you can use the dial, answer, and hang up command to simulate the actions of a standard telephone. That would be a young, scrappy Mark Spencer doing the beta versions of the... I, I don't know how I got it, but I went through these files and I went, that's not me, that's Mark. So I feel like I've encountered the basement tapes. Uh, so. <laughs>
I don't think even he knows that I have them. <laughs> So uh, I went way short. What the heck? I thought I had way too much material. But uh, please, let's uh, use up the next 10 minutes or so <laughs> for questions, because I love answering questions about IVR and recording. And Yes, in the front row. Will you make available to us all those silly IVRs that you put together? Oh, yeah. Um, I want to say yes. I have very disorganized drives of sounds. and. Uh, I think somebody actually put them together in a little bit of a montage. So let me go to work on that and make sure that I have your contact coordinates. And maybe I'll just put it up somewhere. But yes, there's, there's a lot of really offbeat ones. There's uh, weasels have eaten our phone system. Um, yeah, there's countless ones. Yes. All right. Um, Evan is, oh, oh, we have, oh, life is the, oh, you're the guy. You were late. That's OK, honey. That's all right. You're Evan fine. did a good you're, job. You're a pro. You got no, this. No, well, you know. You don't need me. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. OK, I so like more questions. anyone has questions. More, more questions. He loves running around like Phil Donahue. Yeah, with, yeah that takes us back. Uh, actually, I have a question. Yes, sir. I haven't asked this one either. All right. Um, so you're mentioning the length and the, the number of prompts. Yeah. Is there a time or is there a speed that you would say? Because oh. because I cause sometimes the people are talking like yeah. it's their 95-year-old grandmother. You're right. And I'm just like, can you get on with it? Or or the prompt's too long and they're explaining like they're giving you a story right. on one of the prompts. I'm like, well, if there's five of these, I'm going to be here for a while. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, there is no magic number for a time limit, but I would say that actually it depends on the industry. I've had people who uh, want it faster, and it's almost always because it's like a computer support department, and they just want to get people shuttled through there uh, as fast as they can. So, um, and yet I've had to do some that were actually aimed at a, a nursing home, yeah. and so they really, really wanted me to take time. Uh, probably the weirdest one was doing announcements for Mall of America. And there's such an echo factor in that building that I had to say things like, please make sure you have your parking ticket with you. Like they had to take really, really big pauses in between to allow for the echo to subside. But for IVR, uh, I think actually the industry might drive the actual tempo mm -hmm. at which I do prompts. Um, I think also you were alluding to the fact that people pack too much information, almost like a commercial in their opening greeting, yeah. drives me crazy. You've called XYZ widgets. We've been in business since 1909, making better widgets and blah, you know, so like, all, I know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so all of that belongs, uh, if you have to have that, put it in an on hold system where people are going to be held in purgatory and have to listen to it. Um, but do not put it in an opening greeting. I, I did one opening greeting that actually timed out to about two or three minutes because it was so full of content you know it's yeah yeah I think that has its place but not and, in and, and when you are doing the the stuff in your in your whole music don't repeat it and be like someone's gonna get to you every five seconds I be like it. no seriously I know yes yeah repeating and, too often and uh, disingenuine phrases such as we know your time is important no, you don't, <laughs> because I'm still waiting on hold. Yeah, so I, I definitely try to talk people out of phrases like that. Yes, Rick Sherman. <laughs> we know each other. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any thoughts or opinions on uh, IVRs that are um, voice uh, prompted versus, or voice prompted and number? You know, where you can, like, it listens to your voice and you can either say yes or no or you could press one or two? Um, you know, I think they've come a long way in the last few years in fine-tuning engines like that, but uh, they're, not, they're not flawless. And what kills me is uh, I've actually voiced a few of them where it's been me calling to, I think I was ordering flowers for a client that did something amazing for me. And so it was me on the speech recognition system. And so I, I said to me, automated me, said to Allison, tell me the state that you'd like to send these flowers to. And I said, Michigan. And then I answered back, OK. I think you said, Oregon. And I'm like, <laughs> It's me. It's my voice. Why wouldn't the system recognize my <laughs> metrics of my voice? So it's not flawless. And I just hear stories about it failing so often that I, I just think they add a certain level of frustration 
to the call. I think callers go, oh, great. And, and they feel like they have to scream into the phone to be heard, which they don't, but I, well, I do. Again, it makes the yeah. prompt longer. And I have to hear you telling me that I can say it or press the number. I'm like, well, just pick one. Right, right, you know, right. Like, or just, yeah. you know, if I, you know, maybe make it a little more generic and like, just tell me what you want, or yeah, yeah. these are the options. Yeah, yeah, and they also tend to do that thing that the one slide uh, alluded to, was, which was over confirmation. You selected one. Are you sure you wanted one? Press two if you wanted one. And that sounds like it's an exaggeration, but there's so many systems that actually do that. I think you got it. I think you got my selection. You don't need to check back with me to make sure it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, oh, yes. From Sonia or, or Sasha, yes. Actually, with all of this That's awful. I think I know somebody who produces something like that for FEMA. Yeah. So, in other words, it was too long, and then it was kind of a they dumped you at the end of it. It's like bye. See ya. Hope everything works out. <laughs> I've had crazy. that same issue where you go through the prompt and you, you spend your five menus and then they put you on hold and then it's like, and then there's, yeah, after it times out so that, after, you know, basically there is no agent now and so, you know, call back later. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I was calling KitchenAid to try to find out what to do with my pasta maker attachment and I made it through a whole great big IVR only to receive a message, if you're calling about the pasta attachment, we no longer service those, you need to call blah blah blah, the company who acquired the pasta part of their entity, so I was extremely frustrated. So it happens to me, you know, not just to people who don't understand IVR. Yes. Oh. All right. I feel like I know the answer to this already, but are there any opinions based on the ability to press a number while the audio is still going or having to wait until the IVR is finished? I feel like I've run into both of them. Equally. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think you guys would probably know if that's an older feature that you would have to wait until the entire prompt plays before a choice. I think almost all of them, once that prompt has started to play, you should be able to make your selection. Almost always. I, I, yeah. I think it's been a while since I've encountered one that uh, uh, was unhappy with me pressing it too, too early. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not sure about that. That's interesting. Though. Yeah. Hi. Is there any good tools that we could use to help our customers build a better IVR? Because uh, a lot of times mm -hmm. we let them go and you call back later and they're really bad. I wanted to be able to help them uh, yeah. at least get going and, and, and kind of know what to do, like how to prioritize and stuff like that. Exactly, yes. Um, now, I, I do blog a lot about how to build an IVR. In fact, I just did one on LinkedIn Pulse and it was called the Foundation of a Great IVR. If you're, if you're connected on Link, LinkedIn with me, it should be in my articles. So that's actually a pretty good resource to start building it from the ground up. Um, I do offer clients templates of just basic messages if they don't want to depart. But again, I'm trying to talk people out of the whole, thank you for calling, blah, 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 for this, press this. You know, I'm trying to get them to go, hey, uh, like there was a, an auto body shop that I voiced for, and they acknowledged that anybody who was calling them was probably not having a fantastic day. And, <laughs> Yeah, and so the whole IVR was, okay, I understand this relationship you have with your car, and you're just not you without your car. We're gonna get you fixed up. You know, it was great, because they sort of acknowledged it. Um, there was also a, col a colonoscopy clinic that oh. sort of, yeah, I know, and they didn't have the, the technical, please make sure you do this, that, and the other. They were like, you know what, all of our intake people are registered nurses and you cannot shock them, so ask them anything. And we'll get you through this, buddy, don't worry. It's an awful day, but you'll be, you know, it's, I just love it when they sort of acknowledge exactly why the person is calling in. You know, you wanna sell the problem, not the product. So if the IVR treated uh, customers as, uh, I know why you're calling and I've got what you need and we'll get you service right away. I kind of like that better. But yes, I can provide templates and there's lots of articles that I've written about how to build it up from the ground up. That's kind of the danger is letting your customers loose and just go, get back to me with your script. It'd be great if, uh, first of all, you could recommend professional voice talent because the other thing that happens is, yeah, 
Yeah, so they go, oh, no, we'll just get Janine at the front desk to do it. And I'm sure she's fantastic, but she might not be available to do updates. And she may not be crazy about doing it. It's a skill set like everybody else's job. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. You're just full of ideas today, Evan. Jeez. <laughs> Hi there. Would you offer the digit first, then the prompt, or the prompt, then the digit? So it's kind of. Oh, yeah. That's people, what yeah, people ask me that frequently. Um, personally, my preference is uh, the thing and then what you have to do to get to the thing. So for customer service, press one. For technical support, press two. Some people argue with me uh, that that's not the way to do it and that callers will rec uh, remember the very last thing that they heard. So I always think it should be the numeral that they should press. Anybody have some strong feelings against that? Or I wouldn't say strong, but I like to know. It depends on how long the prompt is. What you were just saying there, is short enough that I can hear what it is and then press the number. Right. My brain, it takes that long to process it anyways. Mm -hmm. But if I hear the number and they get halfway through kind of the prompt, then I know I can just press one as yes. opposed to, okay, what do I have to press? I know that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I already knew, I would just interrupt it, right? That's, so, that's exactly but true. But if it's short enough, again, yeah. then it's not such a big deal. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I did a, a prompt for a client. Are any of the Italian guys here? Because they'd love this story. My client said to me, could you redo it and this time don't do it Italian? And I went, what are you talking about? He said, just listen to it. So the prompt was, um, please leave a message. But apparently I was going, please leave a message. Please leave a, <laughs> please leave a message. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Um, I also once screwed up and uh, the client said, you need to redo this and have a listen to it. And it was, uh, please hold and you will be helped by the first available agent. But I said Asian as clear as day. You will be helped by the next available Asian. And I just went, oh, Lord. Yeah, so I, I screw up all the time. <laughs> yes. And he, he's like wiping tears. Crazy. Hi. Yes. Years and years and years ago. Yes. Ten years ago, I did a little a, a joke. It, it was my telemarketer torture. Story. Oh yes. And I did it in my own voice. Oh was, my gosh. Would you like to make a contribution to? The <laughs> I would love to. I would yeah, love to. The part that entertained me the best was uh, the you know. If, if the call was from a political party, a telemarketer. Yes. I would give them a list of all 45 active political parties. Yes. Like three or four or five or six, whatever. <laughs> yes. And, and I would lead the Republican Democrats to the very end. To the very end. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I tried to do everything you suggested. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> um, there was uh, one, uh, all the people in this house are busy dealing with other telemarketers. I like doing that one. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, and then there was the auto dialer I did that uh, called all registered sex offenders that did not check in with their parole officers and inform them that they were in violation. <laughs> so, so now at these events when people go, oh, I heard you on the phone the other day. <laughs> did you now? <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Oh, here we go. Hello. Uh -huh. Uh, practically, uh, when I am developing the IVR, we are facing some issues. Business having the different requirement. Mm -hmm. Even you know the Spanish is the second language and English is the first language. 90% is going to select the English. Yes. But they don't want to put into the first and they want to put in a, a last. Or some kind of, uh, if they need technical support, there are 11 options are there. <sighs> and if you want yeah. to sort, then the uh, straightforward answer that this is the business requirement. Yeah. So how you are dealing with these kind of clients? Uh, how you are convincing them? Um, you know, I'll, I'll usually try to head those off at the pass and say, no, this is this is too lengthy. And um, again, I just try to urge people to distill it down to its simplest form. So with technical support, I understand that there's probably maybe 10 or 12 different topics that people could be calling in about, but it doesn't need to be quite that focused in an IVR. You should just be able to say, if you're having problems with this, press this. Um, and, and just, again, just, just crunch it down into perhaps the top five reasons 
why people would be calling. And I'm pretty sure you don't have any more than 13 different agents that, that handle specialized things that they can't you know, handle a broader five different topics. I don't know if that answers your question. But how keep it. Right. Again, just just it's uh, a matter of evangelizing to them that uh, people's patience is way shorter than they think it is, you know, and surprise them by just getting them through the IVR as quickly as you can, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool questions. Rick Sherman again. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we're on a first name basis. <laughs> Um, have you ever done any voice prompts for anybody famous, like um, anybody Celine Dion or famous. Justin Bieber or Brian Adams? No, <laughs> I wish. Why are they all Canadian people that you're naming? That's funny. Avril Lavigne. Yeah. So uh, years ago, I did the IVR for Marvin Mitchelson, who is that LA divorce lawyer, and he's handled uh, most of Elizabeth Taylor's divorces and all sorts of celebrity divorces. So when they got me to do their IVR, I just joked. I said, uh, maybe we should have a separate option just for Liz. You know, if this is Liz Taylor calling to start another divorce, press nine. And they, they had me do it, and I think they played it at their Christmas party or whatever. Same with uh, Maersk, the shipping line. I did their IVR, and I said, press nine if you're currently being held by a Somali pirate or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> And while they did not play that, obviously, on their main system, I think they played it at their Christmas party. And I have a sense of humor. I'll play. There's a few things I won't do, but, you know, just, you know. Yeah. Hello. So I'll just put out there, it, someone needs to make an Allison Smith soundboard. A know, soundboard? Just, yeah, soundboard. Um, <laughs> so a couple things. Um, one, what's the most um, unusual request you've ever had for a customer? And are there any, are, are there any... Are there any you've actually had to turn down and, and why? Oh yeah, oh boy. Okay, so the, well the sex offender thing was strange. Um, I did one that was kind of more of an IOT type a prompt, so it was a, a bathroom stall, I think it was used in Japan, that it, it had a security feature where you close the door and you put your handprint on it and the door will not open unless your handprint, so it's sort of a security thing. But it had my voice coming out of the door going, this door will not open unless you put your hand on the, yeah, so I just, that's kind of odd for me to be there in that intimate moment. Um, also years ago, there was a woman who called me from San Francisco and wanted to know if I would do her IVR, and I said, sure. Uh, and she said, um, you should know that I am an escort. And I went, oh dear, that's, um, not sure if I'm comfortable. And she said, well listen, why don't you listen to my IVR and just tell me if the content is, is too much for you. So um, uh, I listened and I felt very Amish uh, because, <laughs> because, yeah, she, she outlined in details what she would and wouldn't do and how much extra it would be if she had to leave the greater Bay Area. So uh, I passed, I said, I'm really sorry, I have, you know, high profile clients, I, you know, I work for NASA and 3M and Toyota and I, I think they wouldn't be happy. And she said, yeah, you're, you're the sixth person to turn me down. And then I was really depressed because I thought, number six? <laughs> so. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that was kind of odd. Mostly it's pretty normal stuff, but every now and then I just sort of I'm shocked at, um, oh, I did an IVR for a dog. You know, you've reached Scout's IVR. If you're one of his friends from the neighborhood, bark once. Um, I've done them for children for, yeah, yeah. If, to schedule a play date with Nathan, press two. You know, yeah, it's very strange, very strange. I feel like I'm talking a lot. <clears throat> Anyhow. That's like a lot of good ideas. I'm gonna have, uh, schedule something for my kids now. Yeah, yeah, there you go, yeah. Okay, well, if that's it, I'm, I'm going to be around, so if you have any further questions, just... Oh, one more, yeah. Last yeah. one. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, practically, if uh, I see, uh, if voice is there, the uh, small background uh, music uh, mm -hmm. uh, d uh, used to d uh, do a lot. So what do you will recommend? Every IVR should have a small uh, no. little voice music? No. Okay, so music is usually reserved for on-hold systems. Uh, if you get me to record IVR, most of the people who I've recorded for know that I have kind of a little signature flurry. I suppose I could find it if I was organized enough. But yeah, it's sort of, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, like the T-Mobile 
signal, that kind of flurry that they play. So I will play that at the beginning of an intro message. But music behind IVR is a bad idea because if people make a choice, then the music will, you know, abruptly cut off. They'll get to their other choice and then the music starts up again. It's very disjointed. So music is great behind an on hold sequence where people are calling in and they're, they're put on hold and they're listening to you know some informational stuff and then there's music, a music bed behind it and it comes up in volume in between the paragraphs. But for IVR, no, not recommended unless it's a really brief little flurry at the beginning. Yeah, I call them flurries or I don't know what they are. It's yeah. a good term. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, um, so Allison will be around if anyone has any other questions. There's um, business cards right there if people want to grab my business card. Yep. Use her voice for your next IVR. Absolutely. Encourage all your customers to use it. I'm also <laughs> surprisingly affordable, too. People think I must be uh, you know, prohibitively expensive, but it's not the case. So, yep. And I've seen your setup. It's, uh, it's legit. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, also I have a YouTube channel, so it's called the IVR Lounge, and it's just IVR information that I do. So, yeah. Cool. And cool. I encourage anyone to um, have any feedback or anything. There's links on the Astrocon schedule site and um, on the astrocon.net website should uh, link you there. So any yep. feedback would be appreciated um, in any of the other talks or this talk or ones that you've uh, seen previously. So yep. um, thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you Allison. so much. What a great crowd. Thanks. Thanks.